Viking axes, hidden blades, and the return of social stealth with a violent trip to England. Here's everything you need to know about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's face it. After a year off from the series, your Odyssey quest pile is rapidly dwindling. You need new open world horizons, and you need them to be shaped like a historical series that everyone pretends isn't about aliens who enslaved the human race. Well, praise Odin for this year's trip back to the 9th century for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, as the franchise finally dons fur and gets some really gnarly Viking tattoos. As you know, I'd probably spend the next hour waxing lyrical about merely switching up an eagle for a raven, so I'll try and be brief. But here's everything you need to know about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yep, you're probably going to need those furs. Valhalla kicks off in 873, as the Vikings invade medieval England. Here, we'll be following Eivor, a warrior who travels from Norway to the Four Kingdoms of England, with just, you know, a little bloodshed on the way. While we've only seen exceptionally beardy male Eivor in Valhalla's trailers so far, we will also be able to play as an equally battle-hungry female version too. Here she is, happily greeting those on shore from her longship in statue form in the collector's edition of the game. For now though, it's time to learn some Norse history as we visit the cities of London, York and Winchester, among others, and explore the four kingdoms of Mercia, Northumbria, East Anglia and Wessex. The latter of which is ruled by none other than King Alfred the Great, who really isn't particularly pleased about his new visitors. And, of course, this is an Assassin's Creed game, so even in 9th century England, we'll be seeing landmarks we recognise while wandering listening to the music of Sarah Schachner and Ezio Trilogy composer Jesper Kidd. Oh, hello Stonehenge. Can we climb you? Since Assassin's Creed 3, the franchise has had an affinity with bobbing around on H2O. No, Ezio's gondola-based activities in Assassin's Creed 2 don't really count. But whether we've been sailing the rum-scented Caribbean, avoiding icebergs in the chilly North Atlantic, or disintegrating Greek trireme into matchsticks, AC loves a bit of floating destruction. Sail in then, the Viking longships of Valhalla. Ubisoft has revealed that these dynamically designed floatables will be essential for our Norse raiding activities. Eivor has a raiding party that we can fully customise. And, in keeping with history, the design of the longship means we'll be heading up rivers as well as across the seas. Perfect for getting exactly where you shouldn't. And, going by information on the Collector's Edition, just like the Adrestia, Morrigan and Jackdaw before it, your longship is very much customisable. Nothing so far has really screamed cosy with all that raiding and those flaming arrows. And yet, Valhalla is all about building a settlement as a new home. While there are, of course, brutal castle sieges and beach battles, Eivor isn't just here to lop off limbs and take names. Building your own Viking settlement is key to the story. It will be here we work on alliances, build relationships and even get tattoos in an actual Viking tattoo shop. Just don't imagine there will be as much geometric flash as there is today. Drawing more information from that collector's edition image, it also seems like we'll be able to get new landmarks for our settlement, like these very fetching gnarled trees. I think I saw something similar in Ikea once. But anyway, the Norse men and women actually integrated into England, meaning that Eivor and co eventually settle in. This means, for the first time since Assassin's Creed 3, 
where we built relationships by helping people and developed a working crafting ecosystem, we'll have somewhere personal to build our own stories. Or perhaps, as creative director Ashraf Ishmael suggests, spend a lazy Sunday fishing at the docks. War chief, we understand. But fishing? Suddenly, a whole different AC comes to mind. And now to put the axe into relaxing. Valhalla definitely isn't all about acting like you're in Lord of the Rings Shire, as dual wielding returns to Assassin's Creed. There have been a few revamps of the somewhat staid AC combat over the last few years, with Origins handing you a shield and then Odyssey sliding it away and replacing it with a magical superpowered spear. The good news is that what's in Eivor's left hand now is entirely up to you. Whether you want a shield and an axe, an axe and an axe, yes, they're throwable, or even, as the devs have joked about, a shield and a shield, you can do just that. And this big armoured chap is apparently only a hint of the foes to come in battles across the four kingdoms of England. Ubi has said that he's known as a ringleader, someone to gather the troops on the battlefield. And, as you can see, he's not exactly covered in weak points. But, speaking of ways to deal with those... Yes, the Hidden Blade has returned to Assassin's Creed. Oh, we missed you, you spring-loaded murder gauntlet you. But, of course, there are a few changes. For one, those using their eagle vision might have noticed that this version has the blade on top of the wrist instead of the more traditional hidden up the sleeve option. And Eivor isn't a trained assassin. As confirmed by creative director Ashraf Ishmael in an interview with Kotaku, Eivor gets the weapon and has to learn fast. Importantly though, that learning does include, and I quote, a technique that with the right timing can one-shot kill virtually anybody. So that's the return of that lovely assassinate button without worrying about it only taking off a chunk of health like Odyssey. And if you were thinking that this might mean the return of the series' staple of social stealth, you'd also be right. Given that Eivor isn't welcome everywhere as a Viking invader, hiding in plain sight amidst a crowd will be possible in Valhalla, even if we haven't seen it just yet. So our eagle might be being switched out for a raven called Sunin, but there's plenty of traditional creed in here to keep everyone happy. So that's everything you need to know about Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now. Hit that like button if you're as excited as I am about that holiday 2020 release date, and let us know in the comments below what you think is so thrilling about the new time period. And don't forget to subscribe to Logitech G and hit that notification bell to make sure you never miss another video again.